my name is Melissa Schellenberger, and I am a nurse practitioner at Norton Neuroscience Institute, working in the Multiple Sclerosis Center. Today, we're going to talk about mindfulness. This is a word that many of us have heard in recent years, but maybe don't know exactly what it's about. It sounds self-explanatory, like being mindful, paying attention, and so on, but it actually is an entire field of study. We will be discussing how the practice of mindfulness can benefit someone living with MS. So, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is the awareness that emerges through paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally, to the unfolding of experience moment to moment. This is a commonly used definition originated by John Kabat-Zinn, who is considered to be the founder or father of mindfulness in the United States. Mindfulness originates from Buddhist tradition dating back more than 2,500 years. Dr. Kabat-Zinn began researching mindfulness in the U.S. in 1979, 1980. He was a student at MIT studying molecular biology when he became interested in Zen Buddhism. He focused on mind-body interactions for healing, specifically for chronic pain and stress-related disorders. He created MBSR, or Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, which some of you may have heard of. He has used mindfulness and mindfulness-based interventions, or MBIs, to promote health and wellness in a variety of settings at this point. Again, mindfulness is considered a mind-body therapy with the potential for health benefits in MS and many other medical conditions. It encourages relaxation, which leads to symptom relief and better quality of life. Furthermore, there is empirical data, research with statistically significant results for the benefits of MBIs. This is a mindful moment for me, first thing in the morning, my AM meditation. Okay, this is an intentionally busy slide. It's a list of a, just a few research articles from scholarly journals to give you an idea of the studies being done with mindfulness and MS. So for example, MS quality of life, depression, and fatigue improve after mindfulness training. This is a randomized trial. Mindfulness-based interventions in MS, benefits of Tai Chi on balance, coordination, fatigue, and depression. Effects of mindfulness meditation on personality and psychological well-being in patients with MS. Cognitive rehab in mindfulness and MS. It's a study protocol for a randomized control trial, which is kind of top of the line. Effects of meditation on pain and quality of life in MS and peripheral neuropathy. It's a big one. Mindfulness-based stress reduction for people with multiple sclerosis. That's MBSR. This is a feasibility randomized control trial. Mindfulness-based interventions in MS, a systematic review. And this is uh, a big one. So types of mindful practice. This is a list of basic interventions or tools used in structured mindfulness courses, but also in personal or individual practice. I mentioned MBSR a few times, and another well-known program is MBCT, or Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy. Again, there's a lot out there, especially um, over the past two years. Mindfulness is being used in many ways. Formal practices. So these are considered to be more formal practices that are seen in um, some of the more structured courses. For example, the body scan, awareness of breath, sitting meditation, and mindful yoga. Informal practices would include walking, eating, cleaning, listening, and exercising. Doing these things mindfully can be very therapeutic. For example, first thing in the morning before you get out of bed, bring your attention to your breathing. Observe five mindful breaths. Do the same thing at any point throughout the day and especially before you go to bed at night. Bring awareness to listening and talking. Can you listen without agreeing or disagreeing, liking or disliking, or planning what you will say when it's your turn? Can you notice how your mind and body feel? Be aware of any points of tightness in your body throughout the day. See if you can breathe into them, and as you exhale, let go of excess tension. If possible, take a moment to stretch as well. So here's another way to look at things. Um, automatic pilot versus mindfulness. So automatic pilot or mindlessness is a habitual response, a tendency for our minds to be in the past or future rather than in the present moment, where mindfulness is purposeful awareness of what is happening in us and around us and being able to choose how best to respond. So you are here. This is a great opportunity to practice a moment of mindfulness. As you've been listening, you may have found your mind wandered. Maybe you're thinking about your to-do list, what's for dinner, or a noise in the environment. 
This is a great opportunity to refocus your mind and bring it back to the education that you originally selected to learn. This is how you practice mindfulness, not to stop the wandering, but to bring your mind back intentionally. So just a reminder, here we are. There are three common components of mindfulness, attention, attitude, and intention. Okay, number one is attention, focusing your attention through deliberate and sustained observation of your moment to moment experience. This includes your thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations. Number two is attitude, having an attitude of acceptance, openness, and kindness for these experiences, observing them as they arise and pass through without ignoring, minimizing, or judging them, especially when they're unpleasant. Number three is intention. This is acknowledging why you're practicing mindfulness. This may change as you move through self-regulation, self-exploration, and ultimately self-liberation because it's all about freedom. Why is this important? Why is any of this important? The goal of mindfulness is to reduce suffering for yourself and for others, to free the mind and to improve any and all of our health concerns as well as our overall well-being. Mindfulness and MS, here are some benefits again. Mindfulness is an inexpensive and safe approach to relieve multiple MS symptoms and promote general health benefits. It can be beneficial in symptom management. Quality of life is so important for all of us, but we know in MS that this is really key. Anxiety, depression, fatigue, pain, and sleeping difficulties. All of these are so commonly experienced with MS and need to be addressed. These topics are known and studied with research behind them with regard to the positive effects of mindfulness and mindfulness-based interventions in each of these areas. So this is a great video by Sharon Salzberg, who is a well-known meditation expert. It's just about two minutes. There is a story, usually attributed to the Native American tradition, which illuminates different ways of paying attention. An elder, talking to a child, says, I have two wolves fighting in my heart. One wolf is fearful, vengeful, envious, resentful, and deceitful. The other wolf is compassionate, loving, generous, truthful, and peaceful. The child asks, which wolf will win the fight? The elder responds, the one I feed. That doesn't mean we try to deny or hurt or kill the angry wolf. If we did that, we'd end up in a long battle, all the while somehow making that wolf more powerful through our hostility and fear. Hating that wolf sucks the strength right out of us. Instead, we calmly pay attention to the angry wolf and let go of believing they have the answers. If we can do that, they end up lying down next to us, no longer an enemy. We help strengthen the kind and loving wolf, giving it nourishment and support so that we can follow it. That peaceful wolf can become our steady companion and show us the way through all kinds of different life experiences. Restful or chaotic, enjoyable or disappointing experiences may come and go, but we can have a guide with us through it all. This is what mindfulness can help you do. Mindfulness allows us to see our thoughts and feelings as they are beginning. It's very powerful to know what we're feeling as we're feeling it, know what we're thinking as we're thinking it. With mindfulness, we can choose what will strengthen and bring into action, and we can choose what we will gently let go of. We don't have to be at the mercy of old habits or old ways of thinking or old ways of being. We are empowered. It just takes practice. Here are a few resources to get you started. The Center for Mindfulness at the University of Massachusetts. I recently completed a certification program through UMass in conjunction with Harvard University in Mind, Body, Health, and Healing or Integrative Medicine. I had a full semester course on mindfulness during this program, so this is a good website. The Mindfulness Center at Brown University. Thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful. Mm -hmm.